Hi everyone, Nubkex here and welcome back to another weekly update on the state of the Shadowlands beta. In particular, in this video, of course, we're looking at the big class changes uh, that have come this week on the beta. Uh, apologies that I did miss last week. There's a lot of stuff going on for me in real life at the moment. Um, hopefully we'll be back to, to normal and everything soon, but uh, yeah, please bear with me. <laughs> it's a tough time. Okay, let's start off here with the Havoc Demon Hunter. Uh, there's a couple of nice or interesting, I don't know if we'd say nice, but certainly interesting changes for Havoc come this week, which are all centered around the Shattered Souls passive. Uh, and there's a, an aspect of this passive that obviously Havoc Demon Hunter mains, or Demon Hunter mains will be familiar with, but if you haven't really been playing Demon Hunter that much, or only sort of lightly dabbling in BFA, you might have actually missed this part of the passive, right? So obviously you probably know about the souls when you kill stuff as a Demon Hunter, they can make a soul fragment. When you suck up the soul fragment, it will give you 20% max health. There's also a very popular talent at level 15, which is going to give you 30 fury whenever you consume a soul fragment as well. Pretty nice. And you can see the tooltip updates. But it's the second part of the tooltip which really concerns us today which is that if the soul fragment came from a demon you will do 20 percent increased damage for 15 seconds so obviously in legion that was happening all the time because loads of demons it was legion in bfa this didn't happen really half so much at all this is tying in exactly to a couple of the changes we're going to see in this week's patch so the first change we're oops, bags are bugging out first thing we're going to see or my keyboard's bugging out is that the um let me get the actual name of it here yes the darker nature legendary in this case my vanquished doom lord spalders which sounds kind of cool uh this legendary effect has been updated this used to be whenever you killed an enemy with i-beam now it's enemies slain within four seconds of taking damage from i-beam have a 25 percent chance to convert their soul fragment into a demon soul fragment so essentially making it a four second window instead of literally having to kill enemies with i-beam that's i you can kind of see this coming it's a big quality of life change again i expect that this could actually be pretty solid for something like you know torgas for some open world content where you are going to easily be able to consistently kill stuff within those four seconds and you're going to be killing stuff in AoE. So there's a very good chance that you'll get this damage buff. You'll get that 20% increased damage for 15 seconds. You can bring that into the next pack in Mythic Plus. You can bring it into the, the next pack in Torghast in your solo play, world questing, whatever. And actually get some pretty good benefit out of it. Not too bad. Not too bad. The other big change then is to your Covenant ability, Fodder uh, to the Flame. Which has got a minor rework here. So you're still going to commission a jewel against a demon uh, from the Theater of Pain, one of the dungeons here in Shadowlands. And when you kill the foe, they're going to release an empowered demon soul, okay? And instead of giving you 20% damage for 15 seconds, it's going to give you 25% damage for 15 seconds. Maybe not the most exciting being an empowered demon soul. It might be better if that was like 30% or something. Felt a little bit more impactful. But it's going to give you that big guaranteed damage buff for 15 seconds. On top of giving you max health, uh, healing, and on top of giving you a bit of fury. Uh, and then when you kill the demon, it's going to leave a pool of demon blood. Now for only 15 seconds, that's down from 30. That's going to give you 15% damage reduction inside of that pool. Uh, let's use our fell rush here because we talented into that doing decent damage. There we go. And he dies. There's the demon soul. It's a green thing. And you can see we've got the empowered demon soul. 15 seconds of 25% increased damage. While we're standing within this. Uh, okay, it doesn't actually show us a buff for standing in the pool. I guess it's over here. Fire the flame in the totem bar actually. There you go. But yeah, that pool is giving you 15% damage reduction. And the pool lasts for 15 seconds. So previously the way this worked was that it would give you a normal demon soul. So 20% damage. You would gain, I think they upped it to, what was it? Yeah, 10%. Uh, you were previously, when they buffed it, give, getting 10% haste when you were standing in the pool. And 10% damage reduction. And that pool lasted 30 seconds. So pool lasts half the duration, 15 seconds. It's only damage reduction. So yeah, relevant for you as a Vengeance Demon Hunter. Something you could use for solo play certainly as Havoc and perhaps play around some boss abilities as, as Havoc as well. But mostly as a Havoc Demon Hunter, you're kind of just caring about getting that Empowered Demon Soul. Getting 15 seconds of 25% increased damage. In my opinion, this Covenant ability, is it's got a cool theme to it, like summoning in the demon killing them. I think the pool on the ground is cool. Um... I do feel like the Empowered Demon Soul should probably be a little bit more empowered, just so it stands out a bit more. So it's a little bit more obvious, so you feel a bit better about it. Uh, I do like the idea. I think it's neat. 
Uh, but I still think this needs a bit of work to really feel impactful would be kind of my thoughts on this. You know, for a big two minute cooldown, it's got cool visuals, but I'm not sure that the gameplay is actually going to quite translate into something super interesting quite yet. That's my thought. Over for our Marksmanship Hunter, we have one very small, but kind of nice change, which is that True Shot is now going to increase your focus generation by 50%. So that's your natural passive focus regen, and also the focus you're going to get from Rapid Fire uh, and from Steady Shot, etc. So I mean, if we just fire off a couple of things here, I'm not exactly sure what the, the perfect opening rotation is. We'll just drop this stuff in. Here we go. We're going to drop in our aim shot. We're going to drop in a rapid fire. We're going to go for another aim shot here. We're going to dump a couple of these. There we go. We're going to do another aim shot into a rapid fire. We're going to drop down our chimera shot. And you can see that focus is really not a concern here for me uh, until we get right to the end there of our true shot. So we're able to actually power through, actually use all of our abilities and we weren't really too worried about, about running out of focus, which was something that would happen before. And in fact, in True Shot before, you would simply be incentivized to never ever press Chimera Shot or Arcane Shot as it is without the talent. Uh, because you would run out of focus and then you would end up capping on Aim Shot, which is now actually quite expensive in terms of focus. And that would be very bad. You always want to use up those Aim Shot charges uh during true shot that's the whole point of the cooldown so this works a lot better it's a lot more intuitive and um yeah like i said it's a small change but a, a nice and big quality of life change over for mages then we've got a couple of small changes first up a nerf to one of the arcane mage legendaries this one particularly focused on single target and that's the arcane harmony legendary so this has been nerfed in two senses first of all each time arcane missiles hits an enemy the damage of your next arcane barrage is increased now by seven percent that's down from 10%, so big enough nerf. And on top of that, this effect will only stack up to 15 times. That's down from 30 times, which is down from the initial 100 times. So I think that's quite significant. This is definitely something you're going to have to pay attention to and consume more often. And it's certainly going to nerf the power of this legendary, I would think, in your burn phases, where potentially you could, you know, get a, you could be spending a lot of spells going in with a lot of mana, you know, going in with something like the overpowered talent, where your mana costs are down by 50%. You're going to be casting a lot of these things and you could easily build up to those 15 stacks, um, you know, without needing to actually use Arcane Barrage, which obviously nerfs your Arcane Blast damage a lot. You want to, maybe you want to keep those stacks high. So, yeah, that's a big nerf. So we'll see exactly what the Sims are going to be saying now. That could definitely shake up your Arcane Mage Legendaries. Uh, on top of that, we have a change to one of the talents, which got reworked at the start of the beta and has been kind of forgotten about since then, uh, you know, kind of under the all the big questions and interesting changes that were happening to Rune of Power. And that talent is Focus Magic. So, this has been slightly tweaked. So, this is a buff you put on another player in your raid or in your party that increases their chance to critically hit with spells by 5%. Now, whenever the target critically hits... This used to just increase your crit chance by 5% for 10 seconds. Now it also increases your intellect as well by 5% for 10 seconds kind of interesting this is definitely interesting obviously intellect those primary stats intellect agility and strength are a lot more powerful in shadowlands than you might be used to this is just due to how kind of that the maths works behind the scene with the level squish and all that the primary stats are just really powerful now so this is actually a nice little buff uh, I, I certainly think that, you know, will it end up being good? I don't know. I think that Rune of Power is still going to be dominant, certainly for Arcane, just because it syncs up with your burst damage windows. Um, Focus Magic, though, this could be good as some sort of consistent thing, boosting up your teammate. It's it's still quite a passive thing. It's still a little bit weird. Obviously, that competes with Encanter's Flow, which is just, again, passively increasing your damage, and you don't really play around it all that much. So these do very much a similar thing. So I'd say this could stand out maybe if you're doing, you know, like a, a two-person Torghast run, or you're doing a dungeon run or something, you know, with, with a friend, and that friend is playing a spec that really, really relies on crits, that really scales well off of crit. Well, hey, you give them that 5% crit, they're going to be pretty happy. Like, hey, you know what? You're running with your fire mage, buddy, uh, and you're a frost mage. Slap this thing on them. This will help you reach your crit cap for ice lands shattering more easily. It'll help them get more hot streaks. Both of you are happy. That could be a fun thing to do. Interested to see how it turns out in The Sims. Still fairly a passive buff, though.
over for our friends, the Holy Paladins. They have another buff, a small little buff coming in this week. Uh, obviously, Blizzard has been concerned about, and the community has been concerned, about Holy Paladins kind of struggling with some of that AoE healing. Uh, so we saw in a previous patch that they reduced the cooldown in Holy Shock to improve your Holy Power generation and improve those just Holy Shocks to top up your teammates. Well, in this week's patch, they've given a buff to Light of Dawn, uh, increasing its healing by overall about, uh, about 25% overall. So quite a nice little buff. This is obviously one of your Holy Power Spenders that competes with Word of Glory, which is uh, obviously purely single target. Let's actually generate some Holy Power here. It'll take just a few seconds, and then we can show it in action. Let's put on an aura as well. I just changed specs so that was not enabled. Uh, but if we look at just the pure numbers, what we can see is very simply, Light of Dawn, now for three Holy Power, is doing this Conal heal that's going to heal for about 1,000 health to each ally in this current gear set that I have on. In comparison, Word of Glory is going to heal a single ally for 2,700. So in other words, if I'm hitting three allies with Light of Dawn now, it's going to heal for more overall than a Word of Glory would. So, you know, at, at one or two allies in danger, Word of Glory is generally going to be more efficient um at three or more allies that's where light of dawn starts to pull ahead if you're hitting five allies it's going to do an awful lot more healing not quite twice as much but getting somewhere in that region compared to word of glory so that's sort of the idea with that again we fire off a light of dawn so you can see what it looks like that's what it looks like you know it still has the drawback you know by default that it is a small cone you have to actually aim it that can be a little bit difficult especially as a melee healer um compared to word of glory but yeah i think this is a nice buff to make light of dawn feel more relevant and yeah just to make it feel better to press instead of just going you know what i'll just always use my holy power on word of glory and uh, i won't use light of dawn all that much just because it's a little bit of a hassle now that little bit of a hassle in terms of of actually hitting the right targets with the spell and being in the right position starts to pay off more over on priest then we've got a few interesting changes to shadow priest Every week, there's interesting changes to Shadow Priest. That is hilarious. So first up, we have one of my personal favorite changes. This is a small thing, and if you don't play Shadow Priest, you probably don't care. But they're, they've changed one of the leveling perks, right? That now increases the range of silence to 40 yards. Thank you. Thank you, Blizzard. I love this. So, of course, you know, the default range for, for all of your spells is, you know, a ranged caster in the game for, for all of them except Balance Druid of Longer is 40 yards. This was the worst thing ever as Shadow Priest. It, it, you know, in BFA, when I, I was playing Shadow Priest, was that silence used to be a 30-yard range, which meant that you could be in a dungeon and you're perfectly in range of, like, an enemy and you're throwing all your spells, you're doing great, you're multi-dotting, everything's great. Then you need to fire off a kick on a target. You try to press silence, you go, it didn't work out of range of silence it was just a pain in the ass so i love this that they've now increased this to 40 yard range it's just if they're in range of their, your spells they're in range of your kick this read the way it should be it's yeah it, this is a big improvement so i love to see that now uh, as you can see <laughs> this is also reflected in the tooltip of shadow mend they had previously put in a buff to shadow mend uh, that it would increase the healing that you would do to yourself. You could stack it up. Uh, I, th I think you could stack it up twice, right? I think the Shadow Man buff for Shadow Priests. Um, yeah, that would just increase your healing to yourself. They've got rid of that. I guess it was probably too strong. Shadow Priest is a lot of inherent self-healing with Vampiric Touch, which is healing you for half the damage that it deals. Devouring Plague, even more importantly, doing that. Of course, then you got your Vampiric Embrace cooldown, which does some healing. And you can spam Shadow Men to a certain degree on yourself as well. I guess they found that maybe in Arena, I would suspect that, you know, giving Shadow Priests this more self-healing was making them just too unkillable. Um, you know, and especially you could run something like Intangibility as well, where Dispersion is healing you for max health. Just loads of self-healing. So that's gone. And yeah, as you can see then, I think it's very funny that there's a reference now to the range of silence in Shadow Men tooltip. That will be removed, of course, and it'll be just its own passive. But I love this. I've gone on for too long, but this makes me very, very happy. We all also have a change to shadow crash in the talent tree then um so this has gone back to a somewhat older design uh, it's much simpler so as you know uh, probably know they reworked shadow crash at one point in the beta to have like three charges it moved really slowly it had like a minimum range where you couldn't cast it here it would like lock like over here it was like 20 to 50 yard range or 20 to 60 yard range it was quite odd. They've really simplified it down. So now, very simply, Shadow Crash. Again, it's just a very simple 40-yard range spell. Instant cast. It now has a flat 30-second cooldown. No charges or anything. 
To make up for this though, this does a lot more damage now and it generates a lot more insanity. This now generates 20 insanity. This was generating only eight before with the three charge system. Uh, and again, to put the damage into perspective, we're hitting about 1,900. Um, avoid eruption does about 1,400 damage, right? Um, a devouring plague is gonna do about 700 damage and then about 1,300 damage over the six seconds. So that's about 2,000 damage. This is like, kind of like a, an instant damage devouring plague in aoe that's i guess one way to look at it it's pretty strong uh, again to put it in another context maybe a better context would be searing nightmare this is your aoe insanity spender for 30 insanity that's going to do about 500 shadow damage to enemies of course that does double damage if they have shadow pain on them so roughly speaking looking at 1000 shadow damage in aoe with a searing nightmare once they have the dots on compared to about you know double damage uh, from that shadow crash it's not too bad it's competing of course with auspicious spirits making your shadow the apparitions do more damage generate insanity good for smaller fights where you're going to be multi-dotting with vampire touch more uh, and longer lived ads get more shadowy apparition damage and it's competing with psychic link where mind blast is doing half of the damage to all targets the vamp touch mind blast doing 1200 damage so that's like 600 damage in cleave for every mind blast compared to the the burst of 1900 ish if i show you this again just so you can visually see it they have increased the travel speed so it's now a lot faster as you can see travels a lot faster much easier to hit targets with it um so yeah i think this is a good change overall the old shadow crash this is what blizzard said and i do have to agree it was just a little bit weird this three charge system with the minimum range they're trying to find the right niche for it the right right use for it i think that this works a lot better just making it this you know short cooldown burst aoe that gives you a burst of insanity as well i think this has a very strong place now you know in solo content in torgas content this looks really good um in mythic plus this could be really good as well uh it might even be pretty decent in single target now too, giving you that burst of insanity. It could be very strong for that. So yeah, I think that Shadow Crash uh, is looking very, very nice. I like this design a lot more. It's simpler, but it feels good to play with and it's effective. Uh, then just a couple other smaller tweaks, just some balancing tweaks. Here we go to the legendaries uh, eternal call to the void which as we saw in yesterday's video looking at the best legendaries for every spec is currently the best legendary for shadow in single target and in aoe in every circumstance actually got buffed uh this was triggering once per minute now it triggers 1.33 repeating of course times per minute um, I, like, uh, I assume they're going to probably nerf down the, the, you know, the insanity generation or the damage or like the tick time. Probably they'll nerf the tick time on this. So it ticks fewer times, but I actually would prefer that. I think I'm okay with it. I prefer that this would proc, you know, I think 1.3 times, you know, 1.5 times get, you know, one to two of these guys out per minute. I think that's a bit more fun than having it be very strong, but proc very, very irregularly. That's a bit annoying. I prefer it to be more of a smoother thing. I like having my tenta bros out there mind playing things with me. I think that's fun. So I like that idea. But yeah, that is the change. They also buffed up the, uh, yeah, the Shadow Flame Prism Legendary. They also buffed the damage of this. So of course, whenever you Mind Blast or Shadow or Death, your Mind Bender jumps behind your target and then slashes up to five targets in AoE. So they upped the damage of that. Um, by, by a small bit, but yeah, it's going to do a bit more damage now. So again, the idea here should definitely be that this would be your, your go-to AoE talent with good synergies with obviously with Mindbender, of course, it's basically mandatory to take, um, excuse me, with this talent works very well with something like Death and Madness, which gives you resets on Shadow or Death uh, and so on. So yeah, I think good change there for the covenant abilities we got one big change to the unholy covenant ability for the shadow priest as well if you guys have been following the sims for shadow priest you're probably aware that unholy uh yeah unholy nova here the necrolords is actually doing extremely well in the sims it's got a couple of interesting tweaks this week uh the first uh one which is a big quality of life improvement was whereas this was previously an explosion that came out from you the priest right so it's like an arcane explosion right came out from you in a 50 yard range obviously kind of a pain in the ass when all three pre-specs are you know 40 yard range damage dealers or healers it's kind of awkward to actually go into melee and do that this now has a 40 yard range so i can cast it on myself still i can do that i can cast it on an ally i can cast it on an enemy right so for example i can fire it on this guy over here and i'll actually throw out this projectile boom it explodes and then it does the effect in aoe around him so that is a huge usability improvement to unholy nova that makes it a lot more attractive right it just gives you those options in how you want to use it um, on top of that they have tweaked the numbers and they've added in 
a substantial level of target capping to this ability. So now as we read the tooltip here, it's going to have the healing effect, right? So when you fire it off, it's going to heal allies for up to one and a half thousand uh, health based on the number of targets, right? So essentially, the more targets there are, it's not going to scale up the healing. It's going to just start spreading that healing out, is my understanding. Um, we're we're going to be going and testing this in Torghast. So if you guys are checking out my stream today, I'll, I'll probably put up this video and then get onto stream. I'm going to go into Torghast and actually test out this, particularly the damage effect of it. Uh, you can see we have the same thing with damage, right? The same thing with damage deals up to four and a half thousand shadow damage based on the number of targets hit over 15 seconds. So again, that is a target cap. It's limiting it. It's going to be spreading that damage, that dot around onto those targets so that this doesn't become insane in AoE. Uh, uh, the benefit of this, is that you know as a single target heal then as a single target damage spell it's a lot more effective than it used to be but in aoe it's not going to you know scale as hard uh, by any means so if we fire this off here on this uh this this dude here let's just make sure we're we're in combat with him debuff up time that's not what i want i want this um yeah so we can see if i fire my unholy transfusion at the necrolord's resolve here we were starting at about 15k there bear that in mind so you're going to see it's going to be ticking down over those 15 seconds uh, we'll see the damage again. We were starting from 15k. Do remember that. So as you can see, we're 15, 16k. It's done about, you know, it's it's done the damage basically just straight up. Yeah, it must have been the four and a half thousand. We must have been at 16 something k. Um, so yeah, that that makes sense. It's going to do that full damage in single target. It's going to spread out in AOE. Interesting changes, I have to say. Obviously, they have buffed the numbers then. It's healing for, for more and it's doing more damage. But because of the target cap, it's it's actually doing less. I think it's, a, on the on the whole, I think this is a good change, actually. I do think it's a good change. We'll see what the tuning actually is when people break it down. But I think it's a lot more interesting that you can have it be this instant cast explosion from you. Or you can throw it at different targets, but it has that projectile travel time. I might like to see, to be honest, that the dot duration go down a little bit. 15 seconds is a very, very long dot. So certainly in AoE, you know, in AoE, this is not going to be doing as much damage anymore. And the targets have to live for 15 seconds. Like, if they're, if they're going to die in 10 seconds, you've just lost, you know, one-third of the damage from that Covenant ability, which feels bad. So I'd like to see another tweak to bring that that dot duration down to, you know, 10 seconds. Might be a good place to, to check next and see how that feels. That'd be my thought. Um, but yeah, I, I love the whole range thing on this. I think that's great. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it was probably performing a little bit too well. And it was a little bit uninteresting. I think this is more interesting now. And yeah, we'll see how the tuning can go with the target capping stuff. Most specs have target caps. I th at this point, you know, it's just something you have to expect and, and anticipate and play around with in the Shadowlands. Uh, I, I don't feel like there's too much point being upset when target caps come in. It's more surprising when they don't come in for me at this point uh, with abilities. So there you go. To put it in perspective again, four and a half thousand damage every one minute uh, in AoE. If... Uh, Reset, no. If I look at the, the Vanthyr, for example, Mind Games on a 45 second cooldown does 3,300 shadow damage to that target. It can also reverse 4,500 healing, which essentially equals 9,000 extra damage potentially, because instead of being healed up 4,500, you're going down 4,500 in health. So that's a 9,000 health difference. So potentially this does a, a lot more single target damage. If we go to the, the Kyrians, it's kind of hard to... Uh, it's kind of hard to compare it in the sense because you can build up stacks better in AoE. But you can see the ex uh, ascended eruption, which is going to happen after three minutes, uh, every three minutes, is going to do two and a half, uh, 2,300 arcane damage to all enemies. Um, so that obviously is, is not going to be target cap. So it does about half the damage, but it does that damage to everything. And of course, the damage is going to be increased for each stack. So that, in theory, could do an awful lot more. Um, but of course, it has that bigger cooldown, much bigger cooldown. So yeah, it's kind of interesting, right? If we go into this, for example, the Ascended Nova is doing 800 arcane damage. Again, target cap, though, based on the number of enemies, it starts falling off. Like, if we start hitting this guy with a few spells, we'll see here. Fire that off while I missed it. But yeah, I mean, the Ascended Nova, yeah. I mean, you get the rough idea. Not the perfect comparison there, but you get the rough idea. Big cooldown, short cooldown. There you go. Over for Rogue then, we have a couple of very small tweaks this week, uh, just to Legendary. So the first one, uh, which is for all the Rogue specs, of course, the Shadow Dust Locket Invigorating Shadow Dust Legendary Effect, uh, where Vanish reduces the remaining cooldown on your other abilities. This has actually been buffed up from 15 seconds of cooldown reduction to 20 seconds of cooldown reduction, which is quite intriguing in my opinion. That is actually quite intriguing. Obviously, you've got some, some interesting combos you can do with that. In particular, I would say Kidney Shot stands out. This is a 20-second 
cooldown on a big stun. So you could potentially do something with this, like, you know, in, in Arena, in particular is where I'm thinking about this, in Arena, you know, you could set up some good CC stuff and you could potentially land uh, in quick succession, a kidney shot, not only on your kill target, but on the enemy healer as well, if they try to trinket your blind or whatever. So that could be kind of interesting, right? And obviously it will reset the cooldown on your kick. It will help reset the cooldown on your defensives, your damage abilities, etc. You know, it will fully reset gauge as well. So a small buff to that, but definitely, definitely interesting, right? Utility is where I think this shines. Then the other change to legendaries is for Outlaw, which is with the Celerity Legendary. Been slightly nerfed, again, as we saw in the best legendary video yesterday celerity was bis in both single target and aoe uh, has been nerfed a bit so adrenaline rush now only increases your damage by eight percent that's down from ten percent i still think i think it's still fine i think it's still fine um again like it, it makes the bandits charm have a bit more of an identity where you could get ten percent more damage done not a huge deal to compare the two but hey it's at least it's something that this one does stand out as being well at least i get two percent extra compared to celerity but yeah you're, you're randomly proccing adrenaline rush i think the random procs of adrenaline rush are the more interesting thing compared to the flat damage to adrenaline rush so i'm kind of fine with this nerf i mean i'd even be fine if they removed the damage buff during adrenaline rush and just you know made the proc chance slightly higher or made the the proc duration of adrenaline rush the random procs slightly longer or something like that i'd be fine with that too uh, so we'll see what they do but yeah small nerf to that one over for the Shaman then, we've got some very exciting changes for Enhancement Shaman. I'm going to go to a target dummy in a city in a minute. You guys had a great suggestion that I bring a, a turnip punch punching bag, but I'm having issues. As you can see, I've transferred characters over to the beta, but none of my toys have transferred. So instead of farming out the turnip bag on the beta, I'm just going to go to a city. But before we do that, first up, changes for Enhancement to the Fey Transfusion um confident ability with the night fey which makes it more exciting so this is obviously a two minute cooldown you channel uh for uh two well three seconds reduced by haste here to 2.8 seconds it's going to do a chunk of nature damage split among each enemy up to four enemies it will split it across so it's just as much damage against one as, as four targets but it will just spread that damage across the fort um now the buff here is that if you funnel uh, fully channel fey transfusion as enhancement it will give you three stacks of males from weapon now that's up from one stack so of course you can have a maximum of 10 stacks of males from weapon you spend five stacks to instant cast something like chain lightning or lightning bolt uh with a bunch of bonus damage on those so this is honestly pretty good and then of course you can reactivate it again uh, after a few seconds uh, uh to release some of that damage done as healing which is pretty cool as you can see there are the three stacks of males from weapon we could obviously reactivate this to do some healing uh, pretty cool right um definitely getting the, the you know the downside of the channel to build is that as enhancement shaman it's definitely clunky to do a, a stop and channel ability as a melee spec you know you stop auto attacking uh you kind of stop your rotation which is usually faster for melee specs than it is for range specs to channel i think giving you three stacks of maelstrom weapon makes that more rewarding it makes it feel like you're not going to be missing out on the maelstrom weapon stacks you would have been potentially procking with your melee attacks if you were not channeling so i think this is a good change on top of that they also have updated the conduit they've reworked the conduit for this which used to make it channel faster and do more damage and blah 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 now the conduit is going to reduce the cooldown of fey transfusion i can i believe at max rank it gives you up to 40 seconds cooldown reduction on fey, Transfu uh, fey transfusion so it lets you cast it a lot more often which is interesting so yeah there you go again the conduit has changed for all the shaman specs but uh it's just the bonus effect here for enhancement giving you more maelstrom weapon changes so good changes overall let's go find a target dummy to beat up as enhancement let's go all right, we've arrived here at the target dummy in Orgrimmar. I always forget where the target dummies are for Horde, because, of course, I play Alliance, uh, and I guess I'm just an idiot. But, uh, yeah, anyway, let's look at some of these changes. So one of the first changes, of course, is going to be two Maelstrom weapons. So as you guys know, you can build up the... the five stacks well up to 10 stacks and consume five stacks at a time of maelstrom weapon with five stacks of maelstrom weapon it reduced the cast time uh, of your next spell so let's say lightning bolt or chain lightning in particular uh by 20 percent per stack so 100 percent at five stacks makes them instant cast uh it ups their damage or their healing um and uh yeah it's pretty cool so now the thing about this right the thing about this is that um there's a sort of a hidden modifier 
in the game that was reducing the effectiveness of those spells that you actually cast. Now, Blizzard has actually reverted that, uh, or they've ner uh, they've lowered that modifier down, so now that your Chain Lightning and Lightning Bolt are going to be doing slightly more damage now than they were before, thanks to that hidden modifier being tweaked. And they removed that hidden modifier uh, from, uh, from your Healing Surge, so that instant casting Healing Surge with your Maelstrom weapon is actually going to heal you by the proper amount. It's not going to be healing you for less than you think that it should due to some hidden modifier that's completely gone so upping yourself healing yourself survivability which is definitely a good change you know as an enhancement shaman you are a fairly squishy spec so sacrificing some of your damage to get some solid healing on yourself in emergency situations i think that does make sense and it is good one other nice change this is why we're going to be beating on a target dummy for a bit is that they have really buffed up the damage of feral spirits they've actually increased its attack power scaling uh, by 250 percent which is quite substantial, obviously, as you can tell. So we're going to test this out and see exactly how much damage these spirit wolves are actually going to do. It should hopefully be more substantial. Of course, that has a special synergy with elemental spirits, the talent here, which reduces the cooldown of feral spirits. So if feral spirits are really, really strong, well, this could essentially become a very potent, a very potent talent. Uh, they've also... Um, changed an awful lot of these different talents they nerfed forceful winds back down uh where it would um make your wind fury attacks do uh, more damage it was doing 50 percent more damage stacking up to five times that's down to 35 percent more damage stacking five times um that obviously this nerf has come in because they just really buffed up massively the baseline damage of wind fury in a previous patch so i think that is why that's going in there and also the breaks are the doom winds legendary just overshadowing everything uh lashing flames has been buffed so this makes lava lash increase the damage of flame shock by 100 percent for 20 seconds if we put flame shock on and we go lava lash this guy as you can see now it's a 20 second debuff on the target you can see it up there that increases the damage from flame shock by 100 percent so i guess the idea here would be you know again a small number of targets you could potentially be spreading your lava lash around multiple targets uh to to keep up that lashing flames buff with flame shock and actually get some good dot damage out definitely an interesting play style compared to just going with like okay i'm gonna go for forceful wins and just do some more upfront sort of burst damage um kind of coinciding with that hot hand which i don't actually have talented here but this now has a, an extra effect uh where it will actually reset the cooldown of lava lash which is kind of insane so melee auto attacks with flame tongue weapon active so your offhand attacks have a five percent chance to reduce the cooldown of lava lash by 75 percent and increase the damage of lava lash by 100 percent for eight seconds so again this should this should uh instantly reset lava lash as well if we come over we just start smacking this thing let's actually put our wind fury totem down that's cool we start doing some abilities here we'll crash lightning just as we can we'll do a frost shock okay cool we're just beating on this guy not too much here for us to press, unfortunately. We'll reapply that. We'll Lava Lash. We're just waiting for this to proc and hopefully get a Lava Lash reset. There's our Chain Lightning. Cool. Okay. We're not getting any luck here. Man, we're getting super unlucky. There we go. We finally got it. Okay, so it procs, and as you can see, that resets the cooldown of Lava Lash, and then it lets us spam out our Lava Lashes quite a lot as well. You can see we're going crazy on those Lava Lash spams while that buff is active. So that's really fun, right? I think that is really, really fun. Obviously, the downside would be that, you know, before, you could potentially trigger that Hot Hand perk, you know, giving you giving you cooldown reduction and more damage from Lava Lash, but you might, if you just fired off a Lava Lash, you could potentially be waiting a few seconds for that cooldown to come back, and you'd be going, man, I want to get that extra damage out of Lava Lash, and it didn't work. Now it does. Now it instantly resets Lava Lash, and you're going to be spamming Lava Lash pretty hard for the that period of time, and obviously spamming Lava Lash could let you easily spread the Lashing Flames debuff among multiple targets with that shorter cooldown. I think it's pretty cool. I'm really a big fan of this one. I already love this talent, although the proc chances, as we could see, pretty low. But yeah, this, uh, this is pretty nice. They have also buffed on the same row Ice Strike by a lot. They increased its damage by 75%. This is a 14 second cooldown that is going to smack your target with an Ice Blade, doing a chunk of frost damage, slows them by 50% for 6 seconds, and whenever you do Ice Strike, it's going to reset the cooldown on your shocks as well. So it'll either let you multi-dot a bit with uh, with flame shock or more likely i think this is going to be pretty good in pvp it's an extra 50 percent slow for six seconds going to reset frost shock which is going to let you apply another 50 percent slow so just multi-dot a bit with those slows perhaps or dot up targets with flame shock a bit more kind of cool obviously that competes with uh storm strike which is you know chance for um for for your storm uh, bringer just do a bit more damage your storm strike do more damage hot hand of course that's what's competing with but yeah kind of nice a little bit of an extra rotational thing so we could like go in we could flame shock we'll storm strike 
We'll Lava Lash. We'll hit him with our Ice Strike now. There we go. We reset our shocks. We can go into a Frost Shock off of that. We'll do a Crash Lightning just because we can. Fire off our Lightning Bolt. There we go. We'll fire off another Frost Shock. Okay, cool. Lava Lash this guy. Gonna smack this guy. Smack him again. We'll apply Flame Shock. Get that on cooldown. We'll Ice Strike into a Frost Shock. And you sort of get the idea there. Kind of fun. And, uh, yeah, it's not going to do a crazy amount of damage, but 10% is pretty solid. Not too bad, and definitely uh, spice up that rotation. So, yeah, great damage buff to that. Bring that talent out of obscurity. Uh, on top of that, uh, where is it? Elemental Blast, actually, at level 15. I should have covered that earlier. Whoops. But its damage is now higher for... Um, for Enhancement Shaman, the cast time is very low because of Maelstrom Weapon. You can instant cast this with Maelstrom Weapon, which is what you would want to do every 12 seconds. Get that instant cast off. Use this on cooldown to get those um, those stat buffs. So that's nice. That is a bit better. In my opinion, it's not as probably as much fun as these ones, but it's still pretty cool. It's an awesome looking ability, although it would be kind of hard to see it looking all that awesome in uh, in uh, uh, melee range. But yeah, 25% more damage on that. They have nerfed then. We have essentially this AoE row, 35. So this Elemental Assault is still the same, which is kind of a little bit more focused, a bit more on single target. But Hailstorm has been nerfed and Fire Nova has been buffed. So first up, the nerf to Hailstorm. So Hailstorm is for every stack of Maelstrom Weapon consumed. It's going to increase the damage of your next Frost Shock by 15%. Um, that's down from, uh, from 35%. So 35% to 15%. Big nerf to that. On top of that, your next Frost Shock will also hit one additional target per Maelstrom weapon stack consumed. So obviously, if you consume five stacks, that Frost Shock is cleaving to five targets, and now it's going to have 75% more damage. That's down a lot more from what it was before, 35% per stack. That's, what, 175% more damage on that Frost Shock? So this is still a good source of AoE damage, but it's not as insane as it was before. And again, just weaving those Frost Shocks into your rotation after consuming every five stacks of Maelstrom weapon. Interesting. Fire Nova has then been buffed, and it's been buffed a lot, a lot. So Fire Nova is your instant cast on a 14 second cooldown that you will, everything with the Flame Shock is going to explode and do fire damage to all targets with, or to six targets within eight yards of that target. This has had its damage increased also by 75%. So Fire Nova should be doing a lot more damage. If we come over here and we're just gonna, I don't know, we're just gonna start smacking dudes. Not going to worry too crazy much about this. You know, we'll do our Ice Strike and uh, apply this to more. And we've got some add-on being in the way. That's very annoying. Oh, well. So let's put this on him. Then we Fire Nova. And they're going to do some nice damage. We'll Chain Lightning. We'll Crash Lightning here. Do this. We want to apply our Shock. Okay. Going to reset the Shock. Apply another Shock. Fire this off. Okay, good. Going to Crash Lightning. Stormbringer. Chain Lightning. Here's our Fire Nova. There's the Fire Nova. Boom. Reapply the, the shock here. Smack that down. Okay, great. Uh, we'll shock this guy. Reset the shock. Shock this guy. Fire off our abilities as best we can. Okay. Boom. Eruption. Chain lightning. Okay. And just to give a rough idea of the damage output right there, as you can see, the flame shock, that's doing a lot of damage. I wasn't playing that perfectly, of course, but that extra damage is coming from lashing flames. You could min max that more. I'm not trying to sort of explain what I'm doing. As you can see, though, Fire Nova now doing a lot of damage, and that's just with three targets. Again, if that was like five targets, that's going to scale up even more, get even more powerful. So, yeah, I think that's great. Fire Nova, it's super fun to play with. I think it looks visually cool as well. So it's great to see that get a 75% damage buff and really start to perform a lot better. And um, yeah, there you go, guys. I think that is all the changes to, uh, or the, the main changes here to the Shaman. So some really big, big tuning passes, like 75% more damage on Ice Strike, 75% more on Fire Nova. Those are big, big changes. Uh, you know, big nerf to Hailstorm, uh, fairly big nerf to Forceful Winds. We've got a lot of stuff changing here. Let me know what you think. Are you excited for Enhancement Shaman? In my opinion, it is one of the coolest and most fun looking specs in the game. As you guys know, I'm, I'm doing leveling streams on, on the, the pre-patch on live servers at the moment, leveling up an Enhancement Shaman myself. Uh, and it's definitely a spec that, excuse me, that I'm kind of looking forward to, uh, to to dabbling in for sure in Shadowlands because I just think it's, it's pretty awesome, to be honest. It's pretty great. And then a final minor change this week to wrap things up it's the warlock shadow bolt has had its damage 
ever so slightly increased for all the warlock specs but maybe destruction gets it for a little while while leveling before it's replaced by incinerate but yeah just again upping that damage slightly of shadow bolt for demonology slightly for affliction uh they haven't buffed the damage of drained soul in comparison so yeah shadow bolt builds uh things like nightfall are going to be a little bit uh feel a little bit better that sort of thing but yeah very minor change i think uh, but that is the final change for this week. Uh, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this look here. Uh, again, like this is the particular thing where your next shadow will be instant uh, and will do more damage. So that's a, a good synergy. Um, but yeah, that, that's all the stuff for this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'm going to try to get on. Uh, I There's a few days where I, I'm not going to be home. I have stuff on in real life. Uh, important stuff. So yeah, but... Uh, but the days that I can, I'm going to be trying to get on to do some more streams during the next couple of weeks uh, when I've got time. Finished to some enhancement shaman leveling. I'm going to be trying to get on today and probably another couple of days during the week as well to do some Torgas testing, which is a big focus. Uh, big focus this week for Blizzard uh, testing on the beta before the game goes live. Big focus on Torgas. So check out the stream for some Torgas stuff. Uh, I'm going to be working on, obviously more spec uh, and class rankings and role rankings for you guys now that we have that release date i'm gonna get get back on that get back on making some guides so yeah loads of content hopefully coming out over the next couple of weeks leading up to launch we'll obviously check out the pre-patch when that goes live and give you guides on how to do that etc blah 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 you know i'll see you all then thanks for watching Bye bye